What is going on guys? Noah Brewer here back again and I have an interesting video for you all today. A few weeks ago, a professor from the University of Technology in Sydney, Australia reached out to me and told me that they've been watching my videos and following me for quite some time and was wondering if I could hop on and give some advice to their students. And I'm like, hmm, why don't I hop on and give a whole presentation, like a whole class on basically everything about e-commerce, everything that I've done, how I did it, what the best way is to go into e-commerce is and I'll kind of give a presentation to his classroom and he loved this idea and we went ahead and we did it so I put together a presentation that is absolutely filled with golden nuggets on how to get started with e-commerce and I dropped in some special advice for things like UGC the best way to go about e-commerce depending on your situation it just overall gave a lot of really really good advice on things that I haven't even talked about publicly before so I'm gonna drop this presentation on my YouTube channel that was the only thing that I asked in return that I could film the presentation and put it up on my YouTube for all of you to enjoy. So please, you know, you can watch it, you can listen to it, whatever you want to do. I know it's a little bit long. Um, it's basically a base presentation with a little Q&A at the end. So I hope you guys enjoy it. And yeah, if you have questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. So I'll kind of introduce myself a little bit. Um, I know a lot of you probably already know me from my channel, um, which if you want to know more, you can go to my YouTube. I, I have like multiple videos talking about my story. But basically, I'm, I'm just a, a normal kid from a small town of like 4,000 people. Danielson, Connecticut, you can look it up. Very, de very depressing place to be. Um, so I, mo I moved to Arizona three years ago. Um, I got into e-commerce uh, September 2017. I was 16 years old when I got started. Um, so very, very young. Um, and by June 2018, I had around a million dollars in sales from three or four different stores under my belt. Um, and the way I saw success so fast, um, if I'm being hundred percent honest is because I got a mentor and, uh, he basically showed me his strategy and I had no idea what I was doing, but I just did it and it worked. Um, and then eventually through time, I, I rinse and repeated that strategy and eventually made my own strategy and then moved into like many different, uh, strategies since then, um, over the following three years. So like between the ages of like 16, 17, and like 21, um, I was able to make a million in personal profit from e-commerce. Now the revenue figures that I've made are, are a lot higher compared to the profit that I've made. The main reason for this is because a lot of the money that I've made was from doing partnerships with other people. And I would take a percentage um, and I would just help them basically scale their stores, you know, find a winner, scale their stores. And then I would just take a percent. Um, so, you know, through doing this, I've generated around 25 to 30 million in sales from probably hundreds of stores, hundreds of different stores. Um, and yeah, just want to say that I'm still a student. I'm still learning every single day. It's really, really important that you guys know that and you don't view me as like this expert because um, I'm probably, uh, you know, I, I started off as an idiot, right? I was a 16 year old kid. Uh, I actually left school like I'm, I'm very uneducated. Um, I left school and started learning through action. So um, we'll kind of run through some pros and cons of e-commerce because I actually went to Google and I looked up pros and cons of e-commerce and they're terrible. Um, and I think it's better from a perspective of somebody who's actually been doing it. Like e-commerce has been my whole life for the last five years. So I'm very familiar with the real pros and cons. Um, the biggest pro of e-com as opposed to other businesses is like you can do it from literally anywhere. Um, so it, you know, once you start making money, you can move to anywhere in the world. You can go to Bali. That's why you see a lot of e-com guys, you know, overseas in these weird third world countries, because you can do it from anywhere. Hmm. Um, it's also insanely scalable. It's, it's one of the only business models that you can start with, you know, $30 and scale your way all the way up to a billion dollar plus company. Um, you know, the, the greatest example of this is fashion Nova. Um, where they started with like a very small amount of money. If you if you look into their story, they didn't get like funding. They didn't. They basically worked organically, and then they scaled with influencers. Um, and the owner of that business is now. I don't think he's a billionaire, but he's definitely worth like hundreds of millions. And he just bought the most one of the most expensive houses in the United States in cash. Mm. Um, so you're looking at a business model that. You can start with like $30 if you do organic um, and then build to be one of the richest people in the world, essentially. Uh, very low barrier to entry, covered that. Um, 
there's not many moving parts as a part of this business, like marketing, fulfillment, and then curation of your customers is pretty much all you need to do. Uh, if you look at other businesses like agencies or uh, service-based businesses, there's a lot, a lot of moving parts. Um, and e-commerce is fairly simple. Um, so that's one of the pros. Um, there's also a lot of public players to model. Um, you know, like someone like me is a public player. I've been documenting my whole journey since 2018 on my YouTube channel. Um, you can see me go from, uh, you know, a million in sales all the way up to where I'm at now. And you can also see me lose about 80 pounds. <laughs> Yeah. If you go on there and scroll, you, you'll see I just get skinnier and skinnier over the last two years. It's really hilarious. Yeah. Um, amazing community. Like like just the fact that we're on this call right now with, you know, people that are all around the same age. Like I'm assuming a lot of people here are like mid 20s, you know, like 20 to 30 is like pretty much everybody in the space. Uh, <laughs> minus the few old older guys that have came in and I've helped some of them crush it as well. Um, but the community is amazing. Um, your sales are also not limited by region. Like you can sell anywhere in the world. Um, it's a huge market. Um, and this one probably being the biggest one is you're building a majorly valuable asset. So um, I guess agencies are a lot harder to make. Like if you look at agencies or, um, you know, local businesses, like they're a lot harder to make an actual asset because they rely on you. Um, whereas e-commerce stores, are pretty much instantly an asset that somebody would be come in, come in and be willing to buy right away um, just because it's pretty much just marketing and fulfillment. It doesn't really rely on you. Um, so that's a very big pro as well. Um, a few cons. Um, honestly, it was pretty hard to think about this because I don't really think about it that much. Um, but e-commerce should 100% not be treated as a side hustle. Like there's so much catch up that you have to do as a beginner um, to get caught up. Um, to really like what you have to know to see success. So I, I wouldn't recommend somebody treat it as a side hustle uh, where you're running like multiple businesses. It's like either you do e-commerce or you don't. That's probably what I would tell most people. Um, also relatively small margins. Like I've seen a lot of scenarios where people will do, you know, a million dollars in sales, um, but then their profit is like 70 to 80 grand. Um, and that is honestly a lot more common than you may think. And especially with drop shipping. Um, after, you know, returns, refunds, chargebacks, ad spend, like there's so many expenses that go in and out. Um, so if you want to make an income of like, you know, half a million a year or more in net profit, uh, your revenue figures are going to have to be, you know, 3 million plus most of the time to be able to push those types of profit figures. Um, and then you're also making money on the asset itself. So, you know, if you have a drop shipping store that's profiting 50K a month, you can probably also sell it for 50K or so. So you have that side of it as well. Uh, cash flow cycles suck. It's it's probably one of the worst cash flowing businesses. Uh, and obviously it depends. Like if you're drop shipping, the cash flow is a little bit better. But once you transition into a brand, the cash flow cycle is horrible because you have to buy inventory and then you have to spend money on ads and then you get paid. Um, there's certain businesses like agencies where you get paid and then you have expenses. E-commerce is pretty much you pay first and then you get paid. So cash flows are not that great. Um, you're all, you also deal with trust issues with processors, suppliers, um, it's just something that is like unavoidable, especially if you're scaling pretty fast, uh, high return and fraud rates and logistics are sometimes a nightmare, uh, especially if you're fulfilling from China. Um, I think most of this is pretty common sense. So I'll just move on. Uh, sub models of e-commerce. So I really wanted to break down um, the different ways that you could get into e-commerce and also the different ways that you can scale, because I also don't talk about this on my YouTube or anything. Um, and I wanted to give you guys kind of like a vision for what what you like, where you can start and where you can work towards. Um, and then I'll also tell you like the best way to like get into it and then graduate to the next steps. Um, so obviously you have drop shipping, brand building, and then e-commerce as a general platform. Um, so with drop shipping, you have physical products, you have digital products, um, you have print on demand, which print on demand is like clothes. Uh, you could do like designer items like uh, mouse pads, cups, stuff like that. Just put designs on them. Um, brand building is going to be things like rebranding. Like rebranding is basically taking a drop shipping product and uh, putting your logo on it or taking one product that has somebody else's logo and then modifying it slightly. It's basically a way to put your logo on a product that already exists. 
Um, you have community building. Um, so a, a lot of people, especially influencers, they'll build a community like around the gym or, or fitness, and then they'll launch a, a e-commerce based brand behind that. Um, but it's really fueled by the community, which this is like a really, really good way to get into brand building. Um, and then you have designing and messaging. So this is similar to POD where it's like clothing and things like that, but you're selling a particular design that looks cool, or you're selling a message that resonates with a lot of people and you're selling it through a product like a shirt or like a hoodie or like clothes. I mean, I, I hope that that's self-explanatory enough. If not, you can ask me more about it on the questions. Um, and then you have inventing products, like basically just inventing stuff turning into a product that's like a major pain in the butt and probably something you want to do way down the road. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have e-commerce as a platform. Uh, so one of my businesses, uh, viral e-com ads, we actually use Shopify and the whole thing is structured like an e-commerce store. Um, but that entire business is hundred percent service based. We have no products. Um, so technically I guess it would fall under digital products. Um, but because it's not like a PDF or a course, it more falls under services because we have people that are, you know, editing videos and making ads for people. Um, but essentially any business model can utilize e as a platform. So uh, if you ever have any business ideas and you can tie it into Shopify or tie it into an e platform, um, that works very, very well. Um, here we have basically, I know, I know, uh, Chris or someone really liked this because it, it has a dollar figure and I'll explain what those dollar figures are. Um, this is kind of the best way to approach it, at least the ways that I've seen seen it approached in the most successful ways. Um, the best place to start if you have like a low budget and a lot of time uh, is organic drop shipping, probably physical products like this is an opportunity that's fairly new over the last couple of years. Uh, it existed before, but now with TikTok. Uh, short form content on like YouTube shorts, Instagram reels. Um, you can literally buy a product, uh, go on Instagram reels, post a video about it, go viral and start making sales right now. Um, and this is what I was talking about with uh, getting started for $30 because you just buy the product, get your Shopify store set up and, and then go viral. Uh, it's obviously a lot more complex than that, but this is a great way. Like if you're somebody who has like three hours a day and you don't have a big budget, I would 100% look into organic marketing if you're going to get into e-com. Um, but if you have, you know, two or 3,000 or a decent income, then, or actually I'll talk about the 10K for the organic. So the reason these numbers are here is because this is what I recommend you profit before you graduate to the next step. Um, so if you're going to start with organic, I think organic marketing is a great way to make $10,000 in profit. But once you have $10,000 in profit, I think it's no longer worth the time and energy to do organic. And then you're probably going to want to move into paid ads. Okay. So paid ads is basically what I do. That's basically what I've specialized in for the last five years. I did Facebook ads for three years and now I'm on the TikTok ads for the last two years. Um, and you can do physical products or digital. It just depends on like what your preferences are. I think digital is a little bit harder, but it has a better payoff. Um, it's also easier to transition into brand if you have a digital product like a PDF or a course or something like that. Um, and this is a really, really, really good way to make your first hundred grand, uh, depending on like how big your winning products are. I've, I've seen a lot of people find a winner and then they'll end up doing like 300K in profit. Obviously, if that's the case, you're going to make more than a hundred grand. But the majority of people will find a winning product they'll do 50 to 100,000 in revenue and then their their profit will be sitting about, you know, 15 to 30,000 per winning product that they have. So, we'll go over this, but essentially it's a great way to make your first 100,000, but once you're sitting on 100,000 from this point, you're basically want to move into rebranding, which is basically taking that product and putting your logo on it maybe shipping it to a, a 3PL service uh, here in the United States or in Australia, if uh, that's where you're selling. Um, and you can sell there, by the way, I actually have multiple students that have and have done very well just in the Australian market. Um, so, you know, from this point, organic, great, you made 10k, which you can skip organic, by the way, you don't have to do it. Um, and then paid ads. And then once you scale to like 100k with paid ads, you go into rebranding, um, and if you can make it through these three stages, um, you can like, this is where you'll start to make serious money. When you have a winning product, you're scaling, 
and then you rebrand it. Now you have great shipping times. You have your logo on the product, which means now you're building the asset. That logo is worth money because you have customers and it's a brand that you can then sell if you wanted to. Um, and this is like a great, like a lot, a lot, a lot of people will make like a half a million dollars to a million dollars just with this stage, especially if they end up exiting the brand. Like if they'll, if they build it to like a few hundred thousand dollars a year in profit, they'll exit it for, you know, a million to $2 million. Or if you made your million dollars and you're ready to move on to other things and you want to go for the billion, you want to go for the fashion over, um, you can get into uh, designing and messaging. Um, I prefer messaging. I think messaging is much better, especially right now. Um, you know, building a community that all have a common goal, uh, like fitness or mental health or something like that, and then selling a product behind it, like clothing or, uh, you know, some some sort of like way for them to show that they're part of this community. Uh, there's one brand that you all should write down and, and uh, start studying. It's called Kill Crew. Um, and they've done this incredibly well. Um, I think there's this there's originally started off as like a jujitsu uh, community, but it's turned into a mental health community. Um, and they're basically following this and they they do millions and millions a month. Um, so they're well on their way to being maybe not a billion dollar brand yet, but easily major brand and they're making every move perfectly. I love what they're doing. And then you have inventing, which inventing, I mean, you guys know the cap to this. There's no cap to it. Um, but the point is, don't come into e-commerce and try to build a brand if you're still in these first two stages, because there's a lot, a lot of mistakes that you can make. Um, and that that's really like the point, which is like, even if you want to build a brand, it's way smarter to start drop shipping, go through the rounds of testing, you know, finding products, testing them, seeing how they perform, find a few winning products. And then once you have that experience and that cash, then you guys can build a brand and start making real money. Mm -hmm. Okay. And one thing to note, you can also start from the bottom and work your way all the way up with a single uh, product or a single business. Like you can start with organic. And then once you make that work, you can go to paid ads and then you can rebrand the product and then you can invent a new version of it. That's better. Uh, and then scale from there, which is really cool. So I'll kind of go more in depth on paid ads now, because I know that you guys, you guys already watch my YouTube channel and stuff. I know that you didn't want me to go too in depth on this, but um, paid ads is basically what I specialize in. So if you want organic help, it's probably best to go somewhere else. I have some tips on it, but um, basically all paid ads dropshipping is if you, you can simple it down to four things, finding products, getting the ads made, testing, and then scaling once you find a winner. Um, and your main goal is to find the winning product. That's what everybody that's drop shipping, like their main number one goal is to find a winner, uh, something that's profitable and scalable. Um, and I pretty much only do TikTok ads right now. And the reason for that is because Facebook is very ban happy. Um, and I basically got banned off Facebook. And so did all of my clients and students and ad buyers. Like we just got completely screwed on, on Facebook. And I was basically running into this loop of like buying accounts <clears throat> I think it got to a point where I was spending two to three grand a month just on buying Facebook accounts to run ads. Wow. Um, so I started uh, messing around with TikTok and then TikTok at the time was actually outperforming Facebook. So I was like, okay, whatever. I'm just going to go all in with TikTok. And then ever since then, I've just stuck with it and it, it still works. Uh, we're still finding probably like two to three winning products a week uh, with TikTok ads right now. Um, and the best thing that you can do a hundred percent is finding a proven method and sticking to it. Um, and basically what this means is you can kind of do things the way that you think they should be done. Um, you can also find a proven method and then do your version of that proven method, or you can find a proven method and just blindly follow it and just trust that everything in that method is worth it, or it is the best way to do things. And the only one out of those three that will actually work is picking a proven method and sticking to it um, and blindly trusting it, uh, which is exactly what I did with my mentor. Like I said earlier, I had no idea what I was doing. I was just doing it. Um, and that's the best way to do it. Uh, if you try to figure out your own method, you're basically relying on luck or you're going to spend a ton of time and a ton of money trying to develop a method that works. Um, so find somebody that you trust. Doesn't have to be me. Could be literally anybody out there that has a method that they're public about um, and just stick to their method. P pretty much every variable of my method is on my YouTube channel. Uh, same thing with others. So you don't even have to pay to get the methods. 
uh, if you don't want. Um, product research. I don't have to elaborate too much on this. I think I can just show this on the screen and you guys will put it all together. Um, but I know that you did want me to talk about like how to actually do product research and some different tools. So you mentioned tools. I'm assuming that you were talking about, you know, Ecom Hunt or Viral Vault or like these types of platforms, PP ads. Yeah. <clears throat> so these tools are good. Um, the only thing is, and the only thing that I need everybody to understand is that there's no way to validate a product before you test it to determine how it's going to perform. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because the way that a test performs has so many variables. It is not just the product. It's also how uh, the platform decides to show your ads, who it's showing the ads to, uh, how you design your store, what your actual ad is. So even if you found a validation method that worked, it wouldn't be the greatest and it wouldn't be accurate. So with this in mind, the only value that dropshipping product research tools have are putting products in front of you. And that's it. At the end of the day, it's up to you to de determine if that product is worth testing or not. So you can use PP ads, you can use Ecom Hunt, you can use these uh, services or softwares to get ideas uh, and just get things on paper. But you're going to have to ask these questions and come up with sense sensible answers for these questions for yourself if you want a good chance of finding a winner and i actually forgot to add one thing on here i think um so like the first thing i always like when i'm looking at a list of products like let's say that you go on pp ads you build a list of like 30 products that you think are great i would recommend going through it again um, and asking yourself these questions for every single product uh, and I did forget one. The first question I always ask is, is this product saturated um, or have I seen it before? Uh, and a little saturation you, uh, test you guys can run. Uh, just go, if you're doing TikTok ads, just go on TikTok and just search the name of the product or a couple different variations of the name of the product. Um, <clears throat> if there's a bunch of videos that have a million plus views, then that product is probably saturated and it's probably not worth testing, um, most likely. You can't say for sure on everything, but most likely. Uh, and then if there's only one or two videos with like a million views, then it's it's probably fine because um, pretty much every product is on TikTok. You're not going to find something that's fully untapped. Um, it's very rare. Okay. Uh, and then these questions are important. Um, what desire does the product create? Does it solve a problem or does it just look cool? Uh, who does it do it for? Um, is it a valuable enough problem to solve or is it cool enough? is basically what this question means. Is it cool enough for someone to, uh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Impulsively pull out their credit card and purchase it on the spot. <clears throat> is the problem big enough? Is the, uh, does it look cool enough? Uh, does it have good perceived value with good margins? Um, this is really, really important because just because a product meets all the criteria, if it's priced at like $30, and the perceived value of the product is $30, um, in order to have good margins, you're going to have to sell it for 60. And if everybody thinks it's only worth 30 and you sell it for 60, you're probably not going to make sales. Um, and then the product being native to the platform is self-explanatory. TikTok is entertaining. Facebook is uh, almost every product you could run on Facebook, actually. This is my formula for making UGC. <clears throat> you guys can write this down, but basically... I know that you wanted me to talk about ad creation. Um, a lot of what we do is, you know, basically repurposing content um, for the initial testing. And then once you find a winner, you go ahead and make UGC. So um, you would do these in order. So you basically call out the audience. I wish I had a product or something so I could make an example. Uh, but you basically call out the audience. Um, you want to think of a product real quick? I can come up with examples. iPhone case. A phone case for what? Oh, phone case. That one that you wear around, the, that girls are just wearing. Wearable phone, iPhone case. Like the purse ones? Yeah. Okay. So calling out this audience, you know, you're talking, you're talking to like a, a fashion, something that's fashionable. Um, maybe it solves a problem because females don't have pockets and they need a place to put their phone so they could just hang it around their neck, right? So that's kind of what we're dealing with. Calling out this audience is going to be like either... Um, 
and just pretend I'm a female talking in an ad, I would say something along the lines of, do you never have a place to put your phone or do you hate carrying your phone around everywhere you go because you don't have pockets? Um, you could also go like, I probably, I probably wouldn't take the, the fashionable angle because I think the problem it solves is much better. So I'd probably ask them like, do you hate carrying around your phone? Cause you don't have any pockets, yada, yada, which is also mentioning the problem. So you're kind of knocking out two things in one stone. Um, and then you would just demonstrate the solution in an entertaining way. This is very, very important, especially for TikTok, um, because you don't want to just show the purse. You don't want to just show the phone in the purse and just be like, oh, this is the purse thing. You want to show it in an entertaining way. So you would probably want uh, a model or somebody like wearing the purse and then kind of use your camera to like pan around. Um, maybe you could do it outside. Uh, make sure that you have good lighting. Um, like this type of stuff is very important because... A, a purse phone case is very self-explanatory so you're not going to have to really explain what it does you're just showing what it is in a very entertaining way that keeps people watching um, and keeps people entertained um, and then you can also like right after you show what it does this is something that I haven't even talked about publicly yet um, so this will be the first time but making recommendations on how to use the product in like a secret way is one of the best ways to motivate purchases. Um, and the best way to do this for like this product would be something along the lines of you call it the audience, you show like a, a cool entertaining pan that like makes the product look really fun uh, or, or really pretty or whatever. And then you would cut to the UGC creator's face and you would have them say something like this. You would have them say, and guys, it has this little pocket on the side and I put my ID in it and I never forget my ID anymore, right? Like the problem of forgetting your ID will never happen. So you're basically making it look like you're making like this secret bonus uh, recommendation on the best way to use the product, um, which actually I do in product descriptions as well. Um, but you can also do it in your ads and it just comes off as like very genuine. Um, and it, it shows that like you as the brand are showing people uh, how to actually use your product in the best way. And if you're doing UGC, it makes the UGC seem way more legit and like a testimonial, which is what UGC is derived from, um, because the people are giving like their personal recommendations on the best way to use them. Um, so definitely include that if you can. Uh, and then a simple call to action, um, self-explanatory. You can include a discount code or an offer as well. This is my personal recommendation. If you're about to start a store and you're going to start testing products and you want to see success in the fastest way, um, plan on finding about 50 to 100 products per week. Just throw them in a Google sheet wow. and then re-review that product list. You say something? Oh, no, that's that's a lot. Okay, but that, that we, we <laughs> teach, no, we teach systems here and that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so when you're doing the initial research for the 100 a week, you're not being super strict. All right. You're just kind of, you're seeing products that you think are cool and throwing them in a list. Gotcha. Um, yeah. And then what I, what I usually tell people is out of those 50 to hundred, you're only going to want to test like two or three. Um, this is basically stopping you from testing everything you see and, you know, forcing you to like, you know, compare products with each other and pick out the best ones. Like this is probably the best thing that any beginner can do um, in the space, which is why I tell everybody to do it. Mm. Um, and then obviously you follow my method, spend about a hundred dollars per product tested. You can do it with less. Uh, I think Australian dollar, it's might be a little bit more cause this is USD. Mm -hmm. Um, and then if you want more of my specific methods, you can just go to my YouTube. I have them all in there. Um, so to expand on what I was talking about earlier, like the best way to actually approach paid ads, drop shipping is to test products until you have a winner. Uh, scale that winner to, uh, I don't know, to, to 100 to $200 per day in profit. And then once you reach that point, start another store, start testing again, and find another winner. So you really want to reinvest your profits from one winner to the other. Um, and I've, the, the record that I've had for the most successful stores running at once was eight to nine. Um, and the way that we built to that point was uh, we found a winner and then took the hunter per day, reinvested that into testing. And we basically found another winner and another winner and another winner. And then once we hit like five to eight winners, we, we were trying to reinvest all of the, all of the profit back into testing. And it was literally impossible. 
uh, because we started profiting like a thousand a day, 2000 a day. Um, and that's a lot of products to be testing. So that's basically the best way to do it. And then once you get to that point, um, once you get to like five winners at once, um, you'll basically always have a winning product because if you're consistently testing, you'll find a new winner, your old winners will die off, but you'll replace it with a new one. Um, if you only have, if you only find one winning product, which is what a lot of people do, and then you just stick with that one winner and you scale it. When that winner dies, you'll have nothing and you have to go back to testing. And, uh, you know, you'll go from, you know, making a thousand bucks a day to like zero again, which really, really sucks. So this is why this is the best way to do this. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, <clears throat> oh, yeah. And obviously, um, if your goal is to graduate, um, having multiple winners will put you in a much better space. Um, in terms of like your experience and stuff to like be able to go off and make uh, good decisions with building brands and, and things like that. So it's just really, really good. All right. Um, so what we're going to do, we've, we've asked people uh, in the in the Discord group that we have for questions and we've curated the questions and Chris is going to ask you them. Okay. Uh, okay. So how should uh, beginning dropshippers think about general stores versus single product stores in their strategy? Um, should we open a general store in a niche that we're investigating uh, and test products there and then promote winners uh, to single product stores? Uh, the problem with the mindset of like changing winning products is uh, if you change anything on a winning product, you're introducing a new variable. So uh, you can't expect it to perform the same so usually what I'll tell people is like, if you're going to do testing on a general store, then plan on scaling on a general store as well, <clears throat> cool. which is part, partly why we start with one product branded stores so that we don't have to change anything once we find a winner. Do you, um, do you, do you have a pre preference for single product stores though, right? That seems to be the general message in your videos. Yeah, the, the reason it's like that is because when I was doing Facebook ads, I was very, very pro general store, like pretty much every store I ran on Facebook was general. Uh, and we just scaled like it, we didn't touch it, we didn't really transition the brands. Uh, but then when I got into TikTok, I started with general stores. Um, and I was kind of struggling. And I started doing one product stores. And I, I actually split tested, like I tested 20 products on general store tested 20 on one product and one product just like, far far outperformed like i think we found like six winners uh with the one product stores and then maybe like two uh with the generals um so ever since then like i just haven't looked back uh, i just built a system to build one product stores very fast um and that solved that problem at least okay cool um all right, another one here. Um, can you discuss some of the challenges and solutions that you've implemented for managing and more specifically when you've attempted to scale one of your products? Um, yeah, I mean, there's been a ton. Uh, but I think the biggest issue that I continuously deal with, especially with students, is like payment processor issues um, and also fulfillment issues. Um, so the best thing that you can do to avoid payment processor issues is get set up with a legitimate business as soon as possible. Um, because if you like the reason most people run into these issues, because they don't have here in the United States, we have LLCs um, and EIN numbers, which is like a tax number. I don't know how it works there. Um, but if your business, if you're a legitimate business, then most of the time the payment processors don't give you too much, too many problems. Um, and also shipping times. So like once you find a winner, it is very, very important that you get shipping times that are under two weeks if you're drop shipping, uh, because AliExpress and those platforms are straight up like 45 days, 60 days. Um, and you can get an agent very, very easily. Uh, you can also use a platform like Zendrop, which is like an agent, but it's more professional. So it's less risky. Um, and get under 14 day shipping. And if you can do that, PayPal might come in and be like, Hey, uh, we're going to hold your money until you provide uh, proof of shipment or proof of business. And if, if you set all those things up correctly, you're just like, here's all my business documents. Here's the tracking numbers. You know, you're doing everything legit. Um, another one here. So how do you stay up to date with the latest trends uh, and techniques um, in the dropshipping and I guess just marketing? Um, so like, how do you ensure that the content you're creating is relevant? Are there other tools that you use other than just organic analysis of TikTok? Uh, there's, an, there's a TikTok account called Trend Bible. 
Um, and they basically, I don't know if they're still active. I haven't looked at them in a while, um, but they basically post, and there's a lot of other pages that do this, by the way, it's not just this one, but they just post TikTok trends and how to use them. But hands down, the best way is just to be a TikTok user yourself. Uh, if the TikTok trends are what you're trying to stay up to date on. Awesome. Um, <laughs> We can ask you a tough, tough question. Uh, <laughs> no? Yeah, so we are a little bit curious. Um, so obviously you're in the space, you, you've you got kind of your, your methods uh, for drop shipping and things like that. But we are a bit curious as to why um, you've kind of pivoted a little bit to the education space with both your YouTube as well. And I guess, um, yeah, why you're not, you yourself uh, aren't consistently focusing on just getting winner after winner. Um, so yeah, just a little bit curious about that pivot. Um, I never really pivoted. I actually started this way. <clears throat> so um, yeah, I, I never pivoted. I've always been um, on the marketing end of the e-commerce business model, never on the fulfillment end. Um, so like back in September, 2017, the first store that I actually worked on was not my store. Um, I found somebody who had a store and they basically wanted me to manage it for them and do the work. Um, and then they paid for my mentorship. That's like how I got mentorship. Um, and then obviously that was a risk because I didn't have experience and um, which is why I, I got the mentor. So there was a risk that was taken. It ended up working out. Um, I think we did like 30 K in revenue uh, in three months with that store. And I think the profit was like $500. And that was the first store I ever ran, worked on. Um, from there, I found another dude that had a store um, who was also testing products. And I was like, hey, you know, I have a mentor. I'm looking for, you know, someone to partner with. I'll take 20% profit share, 30% profit share. Um, <clears throat> and then that store I ended up taking to a thousand a day within a month. Um, and then I took on a third one. And, you know, that that's basically how I started. Is the business model of like service-based better than dropshipping? Like, I don't fully understand. Yeah, you mentioned that in your presentation, and um, do, you, do you see that as a natural progression, or, or do you see it as an option for people who want to perhaps better delivery services? Does that make sense? I, uh, I, I mean, there's pros and cons to both. Okay. Um, I think everybody, everybody needs a source of short-term cash flow. Um, so especially if you're getting in the paid ads drop shipping, where you're going to have to constantly be funding the testing, you need a way to make money. So, uh, that can be a job that can be organic marketing. It can be a service-based business where you sell a service like viral come ads. Um, you know, so I wouldn't say it's better. Um, but I would say that the pro of it is like, if, if you're able to like, let's say become a copywriter or a store builder, um, and you can build up like a little community or a network in this space and then just sell copywriting on the side for like, you know, maybe you'll build a store for somebody for a hundred dollars. Um, and then you do that, you know, twice a week, that's 200 bucks a week. You can then take that money and, and test products with it, um, or turn it into a business and scale it. Uh, like we did like virally come ads started off as a service that was only for personal use. Um, like I never, ever planned on scaling that business at all. Um, and you know, I just told my friends about it and then, you know, their friends told their friends and we're like, okay, we might have something here. That's actually a business on its own. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Cool. Um, I've got another question. I'm just curious if you've had any experience with, um, marketing through influencers with any of your drop shipping products, um, or is the closest thing kind of just, uh, the user generated content that you create? Uh, I, I haven't really worked with influencers. Um, other than with promoting viral e-com ads, because we actually grew that business entirely with influencers. Um, but even for UGC, I, I haven't even worked with UG, uh, influencers. Like the way that we get UGC is by working with uh, actors and content creators. Um, they're not even influencers themselves, which I know that some people get influ uh, use influencers for UGC. Um, but in my opinion, uh, it's it's super overpriced. Cool. Um, can you speak to kind of the brand product and overall credibility requirements when it comes to the success of dropshipping products, particularly on TikTok, um, as it seems like sometimes there can be a, a little bit of crap. So do you see that customer 
reviews as pivotal in achieving conversions? Uh, like how quality the product is? Yeah, or just how credible it is, like with customer reviews, if you're seeing, yeah, some form of credibility for the products. Is, is that, do you see that as kind of pivotal to get the, get sales? Oh, you mean like are, are reviews effective? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Okay. Uh, yeah. Like, like I, I, I think quality, like quality reviews beat quantity. I can say that. So like, I see a lot of people come in and, and they'll just throw like 1200 reviews on their store. Um, and they'll just import it from like AliExpress or Amazon or something like that. <clears throat> it's really not the best way to do it. The best way to do it is to have like, you don't need a lot, maybe like five to 15, 10 to 20, um, like really in-depth reviews that explain what the product does uh, the best way to use it, like I said earlier, um, and then, you know, basically just go in depth. Um, I wish I could have a better example of one. Um, and if if there's two ways to do it, you can either one, just write them yourself, um, which, you know, you, you can take your own risks on how you want to do that, or you can order the product to let your friends try it and have them write a review. A review. And then just put that, just put your friend's review on the, on the website. Awesome. Um... So I guess the the drop shipping in e-commerce is obviously constantly developing and changing rapidly. Um, so just curious as to how you kind of stay ahead of the competition or if there's any big factors that you see that could change the space up in the short or long term. Um, the only way that I see uh, TikTok evolving in a, in a negative or positive way, all, all evolutions are positive. They might suck at the time, but they're at, at the end of the day, they're all good. Um, is TikTok is going to become like Facebook in, in, in ways where they're very strict with what you can and can't do. Um, like they're strict with the types of products you can run, the types of ads that you can run, um, what you can say in those ads. Um, so, you know, when, when I first got started on TikTok ads, they were very, very loose. Like you could sell, um, things like alcohol related products, you could sell lighters, you could sell um, a lot of products that you can't sell today, because they've just gotten a lot more strict. So immediately over the next year or two, I think this is the worst thing that that is going to happen is like the platform is just going to get more strict. And then we're going to have to change up the way that we do product research, or we're gonna have to change up the way that we make the ads or what we say in the ads. Um, but the way that you adapt is you just see it happening. And then you just adapt as as you go. Cool. Just makes me wonder: Is there any other? So you move from Facebook to TikTok. Do you, do you see any other product platform on the horizon that might have a promise as the next wave, um, or or not yet? Um, I think Twitter for sure. Okay. Um, I think like fa Facebook ads are are amazing. Like I actually think Facebook ads are better than TikTok in the long run. Um, I think TikTok's a little bit easier to to find a winning product and scale. Um, but the scale is not going to make as much money and it's not going to last as long. If you are able to find a winning product on Facebook, you can usually scale it much higher and have it last much longer. Um, so Facebook ads are pretty much here to stay. Uh, and they're also, um, they're also not as strict as they were a couple years ago. So it's probably a possibility for a lot of you to do Facebook ads as well. Um, but Twitter ads are recently coming in and I've been seeing a lot of drop shippers run Twitter ads. Um, and I don't, I personally don't know anything about them. I haven't tested them, but I know that that's something that might, uh, start making a, a I'm, I'm waiting for the YouTuber to come out like, Oh, I did a million dollars with Twitter ads and drop shipping. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm probably going to message that person and be like, Hey, I want to talk about Twitter ads and learn how they did it. And maybe I'll test it out too. I've heard, uh, you know, there's, there's, I've heard Amazon, Amazon inspire some people going on that. It's, it's sort of a Amazon's version of TikTok, a pure sell, selling of products. I'm not sure that mm. some people are talking about that on YouTube. I don't know if it's going to be anything. Yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't heard of it. Okay. All right, cool. Um, so just a nice, easy one to kind of finish it out uh, as we're... <laughs> running a little bit behind. Um, but if you had one bit of advice that you could give yourself when you were starting out on this journey, what would it be? It's a classic. Oh boy. <laughs> um, my God, I don't know. I don't want to sound arrogant, but like, I don't, I don't really have like regrets or, or uh, anything that I think I did wrong. 
Um, like the, the biggest, biggest mistake I probably made was like not doing enough, like not testing enough products, not, you know, taking advantage of the opportunity that I had, um, because drop shipping in 2017 was like, uh, probably, probably like if I had to put a number on it, probably like eight times easier than it is now. Um, you could pretty much whip up a store, test a product and scale it in like three days to like a thousand bucks a day. Um, which it's. And, and you didn't have to put much thought into it. It's very, very easy back then. So if I could go back and tell myself one thing, I would say just like forget about everything in your life right now and just scale stores um, and do as many as you can while it's this easy. Awesome. Great. Yeah. And I can tell you it's going to be the same. It's going to be the same exact thing today, even though it seems hard today because of what I've told you about three, four years ago. But today is easier than it's ever going to be. So you can take that for what it's worth. Perfect. All right. Well, that kind of wraps it up. Thank you so much. Um, I think we all got a lot of insight in there. So we really appreciate you again, taking your time out for that. Good. Yeah. And if you guys have more questions or whatever, you can message me on uh, Instagram. I'm pretty active on there or, or join the discord, either one. Yeah.